Good morning. Today we're hoping to start an exciting day going out. To somewhere a little different and I'm hoping today to check out the Ferny Grove Heritage Tramway Museum because it's the 135th anniversary of the first horse-drawn tram in the city so come and join me for the ride. I'm going to head off to the museum, but decided why not first cook some breakfast and usually if I wanted to go out and get a breakfast like this, it would be 20 something bucks, you know, a bit of avocado on toast with some halloumi grilled up, some spinach and rocket, lovely fried egg and some avocado on that toast there and a smoothie. I went to a local cafe and all of this together would have been 25, nearly 30 bucks actually, but I probably made this at home for six or seven bucks a serve. The ingredients probably cost me about 20, including the shake. But yeah, let's see if it's any good. And whether you really can sometimes, if you're conscientious, beat restaurants at their own game. Oh, perfect egg. Yes. So messy though. Mmm. Mm. That's really good. So, I'm going to finish this, and I'll see you when I'm on my way to the tram museum. Right, the good news is, it's pretty simple to get to the Ferny Grove Tramway Museum, because it's at Ferny Grove. And, if you look on a map, it's only a short walk from Ferny Grove Station, so there's a half-hourly train that gets you over there, so you don't need to drive to get to the museum, which is really good. Um, makes it easier for families and for short-term visitors to go and check out the museum on a Sunday as well. Just got to Central, waiting for a Ferny Grove train. Should be about 20 minutes, and then off we go to the museum. news. Good thing is that Fanny Grove entertainment today isn't a problem because the Fanny Grove markets are on so I'll check those out and then 
head over to the museum, hopefully when that heritage bus arrives. So now let's talk Fernie Grove Station. Whilst I enjoy my chai this time, because the coffee machine was having a few issues. With the best will in the world, Fernie Grove Station really doesn't have all that much to offer, despite being renovated recently. But fortunately it has got this bubbler, which I was looking for for a while, so I'm very glad I can quench my thirst, hopefully. Now let's check out that arc. That's not bad. But of course, here comes the next most important bit, the taste test. Is it any good? Let's find out. It's fine, it's cold, but gets the job done. That's it though. Not a super satisfying bubbler experience, but it delivers water, it's not boiling hot, and it doesn't taste putrid. Yeah, and with the best oil in the world, the onward connection frequency leaves a little bit to be desired. And something we started last time in the Brightby Island City review, it's Neenish Tart review time. Let's go. It's all right. Not too bad for $2.70, but I have had better, I will admit that. Right, so I'm walking over the museum now from Fernie Grove Station. I believe there is actually a bus heading over today for this specific occasion, but before, I wasn't gonna risk waiting because I found something interesting. The flyer said that the museum opens at 11. The Facebook page says the museum opens at 12. And the website says the usual opening hours are 1 till 4. So, I think we're going to stick with midday, walk over there, see if we can get there. And from there, have a look around. It's also extremely windy today, so, yeah. Fingers crossed that doesn't cause any issues. Okay, so it turns out that the banner was right, however the buses aren't running at that time yet. That's cool. The other really cool thing is this ticket, which is mon modelled off the real tickets back in the day when trams were still operational in Brisbane. They just punch the holes in for the date of issue, and that's how they know you're valid to travel. I need to start this review with a quick apology. I'm not the most knowledgeable about Brisbane trams, but what I can say is I know that this is a drop centre tram, which is a pretty appropriate name because the centre cat of the carriage is lower than the front and the rear, which means you get a really nice breeze as you're travelling along. So I'm going to stop talking now and you can listen to what a drop centre tram sounds like in action.
feel like some toast? These trams are actually nicknamed toast rack cars because with their very square design and the open areas, they look a little bit like a toast rack where you put your toast in after it's been cooked while sitting at a dining table at a restaurant. Come to think of it, does anyone actually use those anymore? But yeah, these are called toast rack trams apparently. Now there is one more type of tram that I'm really hoping to catch while I'm here and that is the FM series trams. Now these are the last ones running and these are actually the trams that my mum would have actually remembered catching as a little kid every so often which is pretty cool. There's one more tram coming down this hill and yes, we'll see it in a second. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a four motor tram and that's what I'm really, really keen to catch next. This is an FM class tram and I'm really, really excited to be on board one of these because this really is the throwback that shows what these would have been like 51 years ago when Brisbane City Council decided to abolish tram service. So today I get to experience what tram travel was like at the point in time where they decided that it was not something that Brisbane was going to be keeping. So this is what we got rid of and replaced with Leyland Panther buses and more roads. operators have just told me that the very last tram operating in Brisbane 554 is about to be pulled out of the shed which is another FM car and I'm really looking forward to going on Thank <laughs> you. 
And of course, when you're having lunch in a community event, there's only one way to do it, and that is typical Aussie sausage sizzle. You just can't beat it. That's just what you gotta do here. Whilst I enjoy my sausage sizzle and my pasito, come and have a look at some of these great photos I took around the museum before we explore some more. Now, while we're here, let's go and check out a little bit of tram infrastructure. Just gotta be careful as I cross the line. And we've got a basic style tram shelter, which surprisingly, yeah, it's simple, but not all that different to some of the stations we're used to today for buses. Some of the old bus stops are still Wooden occasionally, not many, but there's a few. And you can really see where the modern bus stop has evolved from. Over on the other side is also a traditional style tram stop and some of those have been converted into bus stops over the years in Brisbane too. There's one on Logan Road that I can recall that is still of this design and I'm sure there's a few others dotted around Brisbane that you'll see regularly. Now, if you read the sign on this signal box, You'll have heard something interesting about what's inside and it's true the person couldn't leave their seat so they had their own throne in the signal box tell me where you've seen that before because i certainly haven't that's quite incredible really you're working in your signal box and because you're not allowed to leave you've got your own throne brilliant Now I've already done a walk around and shown you quickly in 100. I might show you around again quickly today, but today I am on bus 722, which is a 1968 or 1969 Leyland Panther. Now, these overall ended up replacing those trams, particularly the FM trams. Once the network went, it was basically job of these buses to replace those trams. So let's have a closer walk through now. You'll see signage here for B Day. That was the day that buses took over from trams and basically when Brisbane's entire network changed. And you'll see there's lots and lots of blue in here and these very thin little vinyl seats, but that was the norm of the era. And these kept Brisbane moving for many years to come. And the last of these style of Leylands were retired in the early 1990s. So they did their job well, I think. Very, very different up here compared to a new bus too. Let's do a quick walkthrough and review of this bad boy, Bus 100, which you'll have also seen on another video of mine. But I just thought while I had the chance, I'd show you around with a little bit more narration and actually talk about why these things mattered. Because at the end of the day, not necessarily this one, 100, but many of the others of these SL200s with denning bodies, I used to catch to school or catch around as a little kid with parents when we used to go to the shops and whatever. So let's do a walkthrough. You've got these classic vinyl seats with this sort of scratchy cord cloth in them. As you can see like that. 
That's exactly the sort of fabric I remember as a kid. And then these weird B's, BT style seats. I used that for a few generations after this. The same next stop lights, very familiar with those. The old strip bells, you just used to push that and that would trigger the bell. Many of the bits of signage are actually similar. Very old TransLink logos though, just to sort of highlight that the network was being changed. Some of these placards are quite different. I remember those old instructions, they carried those over to a few older models after these. But certainly, a lot of the design language in this is stuff that I'm very familiar with, with from buses that I caught as a kid. Just those seats in particular, I'm so used to these. That is just that childhood nostalgia of traveling into town on the bus from New Farm. Just coming back when you see an interior like this, it's quite cool. I didn't get to see this as a kid though. But... If after a little while you decide you've had enough of riding around on trams, having a sausage sizzle and looking at the buses that the Heritage Society decided to bring along today for this special occasion, you can then go and walk through the sheds and see a few other exhibits which are still awaiting some restoration and further works. My personal favourite is this trolley bus, a Charles Hope vehicle with a Sunbeam power plant, I believe. Trolley buses were short-lived in Brisbane, but bridged the gap between conventional diesel buses and trams, even if they did only ply the network for around 10 or so years. Sadly, the trolley bus has fallen out of favour with many, many operators, and there are not a lot left in global operations. A trolley bus gives you the manoeuvrability of a normal bus with the lack of tailpipe emissions that a tram offers, so it does really blend a lot of the best of both worlds. Wander further through the sheds and you'll find some wonderful vehicles awaiting restoration like this old Scammel truck. Continue further back and you'll also find a few trams that are still awaiting restoration. Like this second drop centre car as well as a couple of advertising trams and a track repair vehicle, all awaiting to be restored to their former glory. Personally, I would really love to see enough funding and support for this museum to help bring a lot of this old equipment back to life, as it's really, really beautiful to see. And I think so many Brisbaneites, particularly from older generations, remember the trams with great fondness. And... I think the fact that they were removed so long ago leaves many of us younger planners and community members to wonder what life would have been like today if we still had our tram network. As you should know, I'm a sucker for a good heritage bus and luckily Queensland Omnibus and Coach Society once again delivered the goods. 827 is a beautifully restored Volvo and I certainly decided to take them up on the offer of a ride for a gold coin donation. It's a really great bus and I might consider making a separate review on that later. But in the meantime, I'd really encourage you to go and check out a previous review I did on Bus 80, a beautifully restored AEC Regal 3, which is now living at the Gatton Transport Museum. So now we're nearing the end of this video and I'd like to just summarise quickly my experiences of the Tramway Museum. Overall, fantastic. I think the entry fee is great value for the amount of variety and the amount of 
restored memorabilia and trams that you get to travel on and have a look at. I think they've done a really excellent job encapsulating Brisbane history. And you can really get a feel for what this city would have been like with a proper tram network. So I'd highly encourage you to go, particularly if you've got some time off on a Sunday afternoon, make your way over to Fernie Grove, jump on the trams, see all the friendly volunteers that run this fantastic museum and have a lovely family Sunday out or enjoy it just on your own like I did as a real big transport nerd. Right, so it's been a big day, but I'm almost back home again, and well, thank you for joining me. I'm glad I got to show you around this pretty cool transport museum, and a few other little things whilst I was around there. So thanks for joining me on Talking Planning, and see you again soon. On Talking Planning, we will now be releasing two videos a week for you to enjoy. On Tuesdays, come and join me for the classic transport reviews. And on Saturday, keep your eye out for a general more talkback feel show with a little bit more depth and investigation, covering often some really interesting and diverse topics. Come and join me on Talking Planning for more.